this week at Starbase. With SpaceX's seventh Starship flight test expected in just a few days, Booster 14 is rolled out to the launch site and final preparations are made for the upcoming launch. Now let's dig into this week's update. Starting off this week on Friday afternoon, a 16-axle SPMT arrived at the launch complex and was parked near the Buckner Crane's counterweight tray. In relatively short order, the transporter was loaded with weights. Meanwhile, at the Massey Outpost, Booster 15 was being loaded with liquid nitrogen as its initial round of cryogenic proof testing began. The Super Heavy's methane tank was fully loaded before eventually being detanked. By mid-afternoon, the 16-axle SPMT at the launch complex was rolled back out onto Highway 4, loaded with counterweights. The transporter made its way to the build site, where it rolled between High Bay and Mega Bay 1, likely headed for the SPMT yard at the Sanchez site. At Launch Pad A, the landing rails were raised on the chopsticks as SpaceX started to work through the pre-flight checklist in preparation for the 7th integrated flight test. This flight could take place as soon as this coming week. On Saturday morning, crews began spreading gravel across the freshly poured concrete just inside the D2 gate at the launch complex. They continued working throughout the morning, spreading and then compacting the gravel, perhaps in preparation for a crane to move in the area. Late that morning, at the Massey Outpost, Booster 15 was undergoing a second round of cryogenic testing. This time, the vehicle's liquid oxygen tank was loaded with the nitrogen before eventually detanking. On Sunday morning, Booster 15 began moving towards the exit at the Massey Outpost. The rocket was then brought out onto Highway 4 and returned to the build site. It was not immediately clear if the cryogenic proof testing went well though. In the past, boosters have undergone a combined cryo-loading in both tanks before returning to the build site for engines. That afternoon, while parked in the ring yard area, crews got to work adding scaffolding attachment points below the Super Heavy's common dome, similar to what we saw previously with Booster 14. Later, with the work completed, the SPMTs picked the rocket back up and brought it into Mega Bay 1 for post-testing inspections and additional work. A short time later, a booster transport stand was brought into the ring yard area from the rocket garden as workers began preparations for Booster 14's return to the launch complex ahead of Flight 7. Late that night, Booster 15 was lifted off of the transport and testing stand and transferred to the empty workstation in the back right corner of Mega Bay 1 where it should receive its 33 Raptor engines in the coming weeks. Now empty, the stand was brought out of the building and taken between the mega bays towards the rocket garden area for storage. A few hours later, with the middle of the bay now empty, the waiting booster transport stand was brought into the doorway of Mega Bay 1. Later on Monday morning, a concrete pump truck unfurled its boom at the launch complex to continue placing new concrete as crews continue to build out the new infrastructure at the site. A short time later, up the road at the build site, the booster transport stand was moved the rest of the way into the bay to receive booster 14. Some kind of stand structure was also brought out of Star Factory on an SPMT and taken between High Bay and Mega Bay 1 on its way to the Sanchez site. By mid-afternoon, booster 14 had been secured onto the transport stand and the Flight 7 Super Heavy rolled out of Mega Bay 1. A short time later, the rocket was rolled out of the gate and onto Highway 4 for its return to the pad. Upon its arrival, it was taken directly to Pad A and parked between the waiting arms of Mechazilla. Then, shortly after midnight, the chopsticks lifted the booster off of its transport stand and transferred it onto the launch mount ahead of the rapidly approaching Flight 7. Late Tuesday morning, with Booster 14 now secure on the launch mount, crews began removing the scaffolding from the top deck of the mount in preparation for additional pre-flight testing. That afternoon, a telehandler was seen repositioning the temporary fencing panels by the D1 gate as work continues to reconfigure the site for the second launch pad. On New Year's night, Rover 2 caught some new hardware being offloaded down near the D4 gate at the orbital tank farm. And early on Thursday morning, with Booster 14 now hopefully on the launch mount until launch, its transport stand was brought back out onto Highway 4. The stand then made its way back up the road to the build site and was parked in the former ring yard. <laughs> 
A short time later, the installation jig for the Starlink Pez dispenser was lifted out of Mega Bay 2, indicating that the apparatus had now been installed in Ship 35's payload bay. And later that morning, an electric cart mover was spotted being taken out of Star Factory and heading down Highway 4 on a trailer. As pre-flight preparations and checkouts continued at Starbase, Booster 14 underwent a round of testing on its four hypersonic grid fins. That afternoon, SpaceX's LR-11000 crane was repositioned from one side of the D-2 gate to the other at the launch complex. And later on that night, Booster 14's transport stand was moved out of the ring yard area and back to the rocket garden for storage. In a clear sign of just how close we're getting to the launch of Starship 7's integrated flight test, late on Thursday night, crews were spotted heading up in lifts and installing the flight termination charges onto Booster 14. And switching over to Florida on Friday afternoon, just read the instructions, was towed out to sea in support of the Starlink Group 12-6 mission. The next morning, Bob followed the drone ship out of Port Canaveral in preparation for fairing recovery operations for that same launch. As the clock rolled over to midnight on Sunday morning, Falcon 9 Booster 1083 lifted off on its seventh mission as it launched the Astranus from one to many mission from Space Launch Complex 40. And 25 hours later, Booster 1078 was rolled out of SpaceX's Horizontal Integration Facility and up to the pad at Historic Launch Complex 39A. Once there, the rocket was raised vertical in preparations for its upcoming Starlink mission. Later on Monday morning, Booster 1080 was lifted off of the dockside stand and transferred to an awaiting transporter for its return to Roberts Road. That evening, Doug returned to Port Canaveral carrying both of the recovered fairing halves from the Astranus launch. A short fall of Gravitas was then towed into port less than an hour later with Booster 1083 from that same mission. Just a few hours after docking, the rocket was lifted off the drone ship and placed onto the dockside stand for processing. With just under 24 hours left in 2024, SpaceX managed to squeeze in one final launch as the Starlink Group 12-6 mission lifted off from Launch Complex 39A in the early hours of Tuesday morning. Shortly after the launch, a short fall of Gravitas was towed back out to sea in support of the Thuraya 4 NGS mission, SpaceX's first launch of the year. Four hours later, Doug also headed out to Port Canaveral in support of that same mission. Late Wednesday morning, Bob returned to port with both of the fairing halves from the Starlink launch the day before. The next morning, just read the instructions, was towed into Port Canaveral with Booster 1078 from that same mission. That afternoon, support ship Harvey Stone towed Blue Origin's landing barge, Jacqueline, out to sea in support of the first launch of their new Glenn rocket, which could come as early as Wednesday. A few hours later, Falcon 9 Booster 1078 was lifted off of the drone ship and transferred to the dockside stand for leg stowage. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, guys. And we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.